Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Radium Girls. We got like a little upgrade. We did. <laughs> we we moving up in the world. It's, okay. okay. <laughs> um, it's hard to get used to like wearing headphones. Yeah, I feel weird. Yeah, <laughs> and it, it's it's weird being able to hear. Yeah, but it's really nice. Yeah, super nice. Yeah. <laughs> It's so weird. It is. I'm like, what's going on? It's like you hear your voice in your head, but you also hear an echo. And I'm still doing it. I'm moving away from the mic. Yeah, I can hear it. That's crazy. That is so weird. Hmm. It's like you hear your own voice in your head, but you also hear it in your head. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Exactly. <laughs> it's so weird. It is, and I can hear you whispering. It's you magical. Can hear me whisper. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> moving on. Okay, today we are talking about a story that happened in the 1950s and early 1960s, where more than 200 newborn babies were illegally sold or given away through a clinic ran by Dr. Thomas J. Hicks in the small town of McKaysville, Georgia. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it gets crazy. It's very sad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, You might get a little divided on this one. Yeah. (laughs) If you don't know about it. I'm still like, uh, yeah, Yeah. we'll we'll get into it. It's kind of both. It's kind of both. But yeah. More, it's for me personally, more on the wrong side. But yeah, we'll get more into that, I guess. Yeah. So we can do that right now. (laughs) <laughs> actually before we get into oh. our story <laughs> um so we've been watching our statistics on like the people or not the people but the amount of people who listen to our podcast or watch our youtube video and etc um please subscribe <laughs> like yeah, yeah i know that some po- podcast platforms you can't subscribe but if you can subscribe to our youtube channel or like our facebook page um and just interact like leave us a review that helps a lot if you leave us a review um leave us five stars interact with our um page it's helping a lot it really is yeah and um put that out there and i'm valerie (laughs) oh yeah i'm sarah (laughs) i always forget that part (laughs) yeah (laughs) we forget our name (laughs) anyway let's go (laughs) Hicks was the beloved town doctor in the tiny mountain town of McKaysville, but women came from miles around to seek his services. He reportedly performed abortions, which were illegal at the time, for $100. He also secretly placed infants with out-of-state parents in off-the-books adoptions. Despite the scale of his black market operation, Dr. Hicks did not lose his medical license for his legal adoptions, but he did lose his medical license for performing an abortion in 1964. You know, because putting kids up for adoption illegally is not illegal enough, but performing illegal abortions is. Yeah. They're both horrible. Like, I mean, I'd rather the abortion happen illegally for women just like what's going on now yeah than an illegal adoption and we'll see we'll, we're gonna talk about just how wrong those adoptions actually were mm-hmm. yeah a lot of them mm-hmm. dr thomas j hicks died at the age of 83 on march 5th 1972 after a battle with leukemia even if we wanted to confront this guy or get more justice for these kids we can't because he's dead yeah he got no jail time and died a long time ago yeah it's a long time ago we're not doing the math on that one (laughs) no 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 (laughs) (laughs) but i did see that he'd be 132 today 132 he was born in 1888 so he was old i mean he this is you know back in the 50s 60s but Yeah. yeah we don't have a lot of stories i don't think we've talked about well we might have have we talked about a story before the 1900s? When was Henrietta? That's that was re- more recent than I don't think uh, she was yeah. born in the 1800s. So yeah, that's true. No, I don't think we have that. I remember <laughs> we did just re- you know she's ten second Tom and, and I'm um, you can't count on me for anything. I'm, 
uh, Drew Barry Drew Barrymore's character is me in the in that movie because like um, I, if it's the same day I might remember it, but if it was any other day, no. <laughs> exactly. That was a great movie. Mm-hmm. In the early 1950s, Hicks reportedly began advertising illegal abortion and adoption services on phone booths, bus stations, and bridges. <laughs> he puts a flyer up. Hey, got some. Oh, no. <laughs> and your phone booth. Having a baby, but don't want to have it. <laughs> I'll I'll do an adoption or an abortion. Your, Your choice. choice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the doctor persuaded some of the women who came to him for abortions to carry their pregnancies to term. Doctor Hicks convinced a few of them to keep the babies and put them up in a hotel in town until they gave birth, and then sold the infants to couples from eight hundred dollars to a thousand dollars. This gave the babies the name. The thousand dollar babies. Hmm. Hmm. Like here, yeah, you want to come? You want to come have abortion? No, 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 no. You need to keep the baby till for, full term. But I'll put you in a hotel so nobody knows that you're actually having a baby. And then when it comes time, instead of aborting the baby, I'll handle the adoption process. That's crazy. He like convinced so many women. So I guess many. well, this was back in the day, so maybe. I mean, yeah. And he was like a doctor. Maybe he was like. If you don't, I'll tell on you or something. Yeah, it's. I, I'm sure. I imagine it was probably more persuasive than it is today because, like yeah, today, like, everybody's so woke. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so you want me to do what? <laughs> yes. And they had it like all they had to pay him was a hundred dollars, which back then was probably a lot. Was probably equivalent to our thousand dollars now. I don't know. That's was probably making wrong. money from that too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just said that. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> was it more than ten seconds ago? <laughs> Five second vow. <laughs> Five, second Five second vow. Five second vow. <laughs> yeah, he he reportedly performed abortions, which were illegal for one hundred dollars. Oh, you want an well, abortion? Go pay hundred. Oh, bucks. okay, okay, okay. Yeah. But what about like the ones he said full term? You just give him the baby for free. The ones with the adoption. What do you he, mean? Well, he said some of them he convinced to come to term and give them. They'd pay him a hundred dollars, and Still? then he'd turn around and the, and sell the baby for a thousand. Dang. Yeah. So he's making a profit on these babies. He's making Ten a lot times. Of money, Ten times profit. Oh, mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so sad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. I can't with you. He also reportedly lied to some of his patients, telling them that their baby had died and then selling the newborn from the back steps of his clinic. He gave the adoptive parents a fake birth certificate and left no records of the birth mothers. This is just effed up right here yeah. because like these are women who who if these women came to him with plans of him adopting their baby out or or just having it right it was a clinic well yeah i mean that could be a very well, well possibility that, that um, says that's what, to him yeah this is what so that yeah that's what i was thinking like these women had to be coming to have their baby and he just tell them, hey, your baby died. Yeah. Yet he pocketed $1,000. Yeah, that that's the messed up part, yeah. Okay. I have no, like, sympathy mm. for this man. I feel bad that those mothers had to go through all that, you know? For that PTSD, I'm sure, yeah. that 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 uh, postpartum trauma, depression, PPD, P- PTSD. Oh, that's all, the that. P's. <laughs> all the peace. All the peace. It's weird. I, I don't know if it's, like, a back-in-the-day thing, but, like, do we, wouldn't you want to like see your baby or take your baby to bury it? They didn't like ever ask. See, I wonder if I don't know if that's a thing back then or not. I wonder if there were like other parents who were there or other mothers who were there whose babies actually did pass away at birth, and he swapped oh. them. All like he kept like a back freezer of babies or something. Babies like in a freezer. I mean, where else are you gonna keep them? <laughs> Here's the baby you just gave birth to, you know, it, that died. It's freezing cold. So, <laughs> the, you know, you've been cooking it in your womb for however long, but it's freezing cold. Listen, maybe they thaw one out <laughs> before it goes down. This escalated very quickly. <laughs> and it got really dark. <laughs> <laughs> very dark. <laughs> but, like, like, why weren't they questioning it? Maybe they did. I don't know. And he's yeah. like, you can't see it. It's dead. Or something. Maybe he has some rules. Sign a paper. If it dies, you can't see it. I don't know. Did they have paper back then? 
Do they have paper back then? Really? <laughs> no, just kidding. I hope so. <laughs> Regardless, it's it's not a laughing matter. You guys, no, please no, don't no. laugh. <laughs> it's not a laughing matter, but it's kind of... It's curious. Yeah. Is that the word? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it just makes me wonder, like, oh, there's like 200 babies. Mm-hmm. And no one that we know about that we know about, and no one like question question. Mm. Or maybe they did, but I don't know. We don't know about it. <clears throat> oh, moving on from that dark segue. <laughs> yes. Doris Abernathy, who knew Hicks and his wife personally, told the media outlet he was a good but imperfect man. She said he was a very generous person. He and Mrs. Hicks were so kind to so many people. I never knew anyone so generous. He did a lot for this town. I saw him do more good than I think he did harm. I'm not saying he was perfect. I'm saying I saw the man do a lot of good. That's just what you saw. You didn't see behind the scenes, though. Him snatching babies. And how many, like, like, we've been saying 200 documented that they know about. How many more is... You know, how many more babies were a victim to this or mothers were victims to him yeah. that we don't know about? Do you know how many, like, serial killers are like, oh, yeah, he was so nice. Like, they're talking about serial That's killers. so true. Like, he was a good neighbor. This is, this is her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so someone else said, I know abortion was illegal at the time. And then I think he was running into people who couldn't afford adoptions. I think at first it was under the table, and then he had seen there was money involved. It turned into a business. But I don't think it initially started that way. Mm-mm-mm. Maybe not, but yeah, he saw the monies. He saw dollar signs. Yep. Mm-hmm. He was seeing green. Yep. <laughs> In January of 1965, Jane Blasio became one of those babies. Her adoptive parents drove from Ohio paid $1,000 cash, and received their baby through their car window, swaddled in a blanket, and still caked with dried blood. It wasn't until age six that she learned that she was adopted, and she was 14 years old when she first saw her own forged birth certificate bearing the Hicks Clinic name. After a decades-long personal investigation to discover the shocking truth about her birth, Blasio also began to identify and reunite other victims of the Hicks Clinic human trafficking scheme. So, received your baby through a car window. With dried blood. Caked and dried blood on it. How did that? So, it's like, mom gave birth. Oh, your baby died. He takes the baby to maybe some sort of incubator to see if it's going to live for a little bit. Calls, Calls this family up saying, hey, you got a baby. And from the time that he makes this call to the time that they get there, nobody's cleaned this baby up, for one. Mm-mm. And you're just going to hand it to somebody in a, through a window? Did he have what? nurses? Huh? Did he have, like, nurses, other mm-hmm. staff? And, mm-hmm. and they were all in on this. I don't believe so. I don't think they knew exactly what was happening to a full extent. I think there were a few nurses that would actually stay the night with some of the moms who Mm -hmm. um, maybe were going through the abortion process or something like that. They would stay through the night and they knew he was doing the abortions because it was illegal. I don't think they knew about the selling the babies. Yeah. That's the part I'm wondering. I'm trying to remember, but I don't. I don't think they really knew. There might have, there had to be, there had to be. Yeah, there had to be because he needs help. Yeah. Oh. Jane was asked by A and E. Many people from McKaysville have said that doctors Hick- that Doctor Hicks was doing a public service by putting so many babies into the arms of parents who wanted a child. How do you feel about that, particularly in light of Kitty Self's situation in January of nineteen sixty five? Jane said Dr. Hicks was doing a service to himself, which is apparent by the lack of a safety net for the babies and the money he was charging. The $1,000 in 1964 he charged the average couple is equivalent to approximately $30,000 to $45,000 today. It's a lot. 
That's what I was thinking. Like that a thousand dollars back then had to be a good chunk of change now. Yeah. That's a car. Yeah. That's the price of a whole car. <laughs> True. You're selling your baby for the car. price of a car. Or not your baby, but babies. Yeah. <laughs> he charged what he could get from the hopeful couples, anywhere from two hundred dollars to ten thousand dollars, depending on depending on the financial status of the couple. Providing a child without concern for the birth parents or the baby's safety without providing resource recourse for anyone in the situation is human trafficking, a mere transaction. Not wrong. For, for real. Mm. So going back to um, A&E questioning Jane about Kitty Self, like talking about Kitty Self's situation. So Kitty Self was actually Jane's birth mother. So Jane went down a rabbit hole and she was able to find her birth mother um, and her name was Kitty Self. She was the oldest of nine children in a very poor family. She was barely 15 whenever she gave birth to this tiny, tiny baby in northern Georgia. And she gave the baby, who was Jane, to the doctor who delivered her, which was Dr. Hicks. Um, And this is what desperate women would do back then. Yeah, you know what? Now come to think to think about it, they did have children so much younger, so they probably like didn't want to question anything. What do you mean question anything? Like about the baby, like if it died, like. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, because like back then it was just like another mouth to feed, and they don't want to mm-hmm. do but it. They were so. so young too. Yeah, so young, mm-hmm. and if the, if they're on their like ninth baby, because she was she. Jane's mother was nine, one of nine. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. It's just crazy because it's just so young and I don't know. Yeah. So the doctor sold the baby, Jane, to a couple from Ohio and, you know, making her one of the 200. Now, her, Jane's mom, her biological mom, did pass away in November of 1987. She was only 37 years old. Uh, she had a car accident. So, yeah, so that was just like a little tidbit on Jane's little past there that she actually was able to find her birth mother. Well, she wasn't able, she would pass away before. She was able to, like, meet her or anything, but she did go back to that town where she was from or where her birth mother was from. And, um, like, I guess some person, uh, an old friend of her birth mother saw her on the street and was like, oh, my gosh, that's Kitty. You know, that that looks just like her. Um, So they got in touch with each other and was able to, um, she was able to meet Jamie Goss, which would have been Kitty's son, so Jane's actual half brother, oh, she, wow. she met. Mm-hmm. No, so that's pretty crazy. So sad. Yeah, because they're all like meeting their family when they're like older and stuff. Like her whole life pass, you know. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's sad. horrible. But yeah, so that was that whole situation. I just want to like, give y'all a brief uh, in case you're like, who's Kitty Self? You haven't talked about her yet. Well, that's who that's who Kitty Self is. He put these mothers up in a hotel room so they could have their babies and stuff. So it's no surprise that, you know, word would get around that, hey, if you don't want to have your baby, but you, if you don't want to keep your baby, but you don't want to abort it, he'll give it up for adoption or he'll take care of the adoption process for you. Yeah. Mm-mm. That's just... Hmm. Rubs me wrong <laughs> in mm-hmm. so many different ways, this whole story. I know, that's oh, it's weird. Mm-hmm. But then another thing about that, on the other hand, was she probably got loving parents? Oh, yeah. She, yeah. Uh-huh. She, yeah. She did mention that, like, um, adoptive parents. Mm-hmm. There's a series, there's a series on Hulu, uh, called Taken at Birth. And I think we might mention it briefly, but, um, you should watch it if you want, or just continue listening to our podcast. Or both. <laughs> but, or both, yeah. It was actually really interesting. I think we both watched it. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's really interesting. And, and they ab- did abruptly in the series. So there's like a lot of questions unanswered as far as that mm-hmm. series goes. And the story just, it does just kind of end. But, um, 
she does say in in there that she was you know she had great parents as she was raised and, and several other of the hicks babies mm-hmm. that they um interview said the same thing that they they grew up with loving parents mm-hmm. but just the fact that they got taken from their birth family yeah yeah when jane's adoptive mother died in 1988 so her mother died the year before it's sad her birth mother her birth yeah. mother her father shared all he knew of the family secret and jane embarked on a journey to learn as much as she could about dr hicks after many trips to McKaysville, Jane, with assistance from a local judge, uncovered about 200 birth certificates of babies born between 1952 and 1965 that had been falsified with the names of adoptive parents rather than birth parents. One of the Hicks babies, Melinda Dawson, told CBS that her adoptive parents paid $1,000 for her in 1962. Her mother was told that she could not have children, and she wanted a baby, so her parents purchased her from Dr. Hicks. They were instructed to come down, come through the front door, pick up the baby, and leave through the back door, and go home immediately, Dawson said. The shocking truth broke in 1997 after several Hicks babies began to uncover the dark secret of their backstories. In 2014, Ancestry.com and ABC News helped the Hicks babies conduct DNA tests on themselves and members of the McKaysville community. So, going back to uh, Melinda Dawson, so she, I, I believe she's, if I'm not mistaken, she's the one, she's in the documentary, docuseries, that they interviewed, and they even interviewed her adoptive mom, and apparently the 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 mom had literally no idea that what was actually happening. She, all she knew was found out from word of mouth that there was this doctor in Georgia and you know, it's a thousand dollars, but he, he'll do uh, an adoption for you. And so that's pretty much all she knew. So she contacted him saying, you know, I want a baby and stuff and set the whole thing up. And she said that it was literally like he called her and she just, they got, her and her husband got in the car and they drove straight there. I don't remember how, how many hours she said it was, but they drove straight there and she was like, it was just unreal that she pulled up to the back of his office and he brought out the baby swaddled in, in a cloth, similar to the uh, Jane story. And she was like, I mean, this baby had to be four, three to four or five pounds. It was so tiny. And she said she didn't really think a whole lot of it, but I want to say that she was told, do not quote me on this because I could be mixing complete, like completely mixing stories up or fabricating this in my head, but I'm pretty sure she was told like something might've happened to the mother and that's why the baby Mm. was so tiny that like the mom couldn't carry the baby to full term or maybe the mom died during birth and they had to save the baby or something. Like, I feel like she was told a lie. And that, and like, cause she questioned, you know, is this baby okay? Is it healthy? And, but it was, she was like in shock that the baby was so tiny. Yeah. That's crazy. Like those, those babies need to be in NICU. Yeah, for real. So, yeah. I'm surprised they survived, honestly. Yeah. So they, they, um, and when they were interviewing Melinda's adopted mom she was like crying and stuff because she like don't you know she didn't want to be judged for purchasing Mm -hmm. a baby like this but for all she knew and it was legal because she had paperwork she signed and she paid money and but she did say that when she got there that process was sketchy yeah but the rest of it she thought was completely legal i believe i could be wrong about that too but i'm pretty sure she said that but decades later many of the hicks babies are still looking for their birth parents the docuseries Taken at Birth has taken on the quest to reunite the Hicks babies with their biological families using DNA, door-to-door interrogations, and a mausoleum search. So, um, like, thank goodness for, like, DNA stuff, you know? Oh, my gosh, for real. But, hey, that's solving so much stuff, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's crazy. Cold cases. and Cold cases. Oh, man. People finding their birth parents. Mm-hmm. Didn't even know they were adopted adopted and stuff. It's crazy. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Christy Hughes, another Hicks baby's DNA match hit on a first cousin, a woman named Jackie Flowers, which is even more rare. 
To add to her shock, when Hughes spoke to her cousin on the phone, the cousin revealed that two of her aunts had given birth at the Hicks Clinic and that one of them could be Hughes' birth mother. Only one of them was still alive. Hmm. Hughes learned that one of the women also had a son named Roger Tipton, 52, who could potentially be Hughes' biological brother. He agreed to take a DNA test. Her DNA matched with Roger, which opened up a whole new level of connection to her biological family, a family who she never knew even existed. The best part was the woman who turned out to be her biological mother was still alive. Hmm, that's good. Reunited and it feels so good. <laughs> Roger's mother, Thelma Tipton, who is now 75, said she never forgot the daughter she thought she lost 51 years ago. Unlike most of the other Hicks moms who willingly gave up their babies, Thelma, who was a single mom at the time, said Hicks told her after she gave birth that Christy was stillborn. It's so sad. I, oh, I cannot imagine. Mm -mm. She said Hicks even had her sign her daughter's death certificate. One week later, Hicks sold Christy to her adoptive parents. One week later, so he had that baby for a whole week. That's why nurses had to be involved. Yeah, because they had to take care of him. Yeah. He ain't going to do that. Hell no. Uh -uh. Yeah, they were involved. I wonder if they're getting paid. We need to do some background check on that. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. He stole my daughter, Tipton said. He robbed me of my life. I missed out seeing Christy growing up. Missed out on her first tooth, her first day in school. I missed out on her wedding. I missed out on everything. Oh, that's so sad. Yeah, I can't imagine. Yes. Even with the knowledge of all that they missed, it was a bittersweet moment of triumph for the women, mother and daughter, to finally be reunited. Reunited. <laughs> it feels so, so good. good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, y'all. I can't sing. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it should be celebrated. Yeah. They both celebrated their newfound family and are making up for lost time. <laughs> I like the way you said that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a total accident. <laughs> <laughs> Sally Hicks, his granddaughter, said her parents were not able to have children, and this could have been the catalyst to convince the women to carry the babies long enough to give them up for adoption. Sally was adopted herself. In June of 1952, Sally says her grandfather offered her father a baby. Her adopted mother said no. No. No babies. <laughs> Sally's dad is Dr. Hicks's son, and his name's Dr. Hicks Jr. All right. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind. There's speculation on who that baby is or could have been, but that person has denied talking to anybody about the situation. This could have been the very first Hicks baby. Could have been, because... She wasn't actually adopted. At least that we... Well, no. She could have been. Who are we talking about? Um, Sally? No. We're talking about the baby that Dr. Hicks Sr. offered oh, okay. Dr. Hicks Jr. and his wife. Okay, so, so we don't know who that baby was. No, we don't We don't know who, who that baby is. We know it was a female. Um, born in 19, 9, 1952 of June. It's just that baby could have been the actual very first baby, Hicks baby. Yeah. So this woman grew up believing that Dr. Hicks was actually her biological father. We're, we're mm -hmm. talking about the baby. Okay. Her mother was actually Dr. Hicks's housekeeper. Oh. So this would mean that Dr. Hicks would have had to have an affair with their housekeeper only for her to get pregnant with his child. Yeah, that's how it which works. yeah, which would have meant, <laughs> which would have meant that Doctor Hicks's son would have been raising his own half sister. Wow! But Ew. his wife said no. Good. Yeah. Apparently, it was common knowledge throughout the town that Doctor Hicks would have affairs with different housekeepers and other women. Wow! What a, what a stand up guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this this also could mean that there are other. Hicks babies out there, like yeah, legit Hicks babies. So maybe that is what started. Like he 
because having all these affairs, getting them pregnant, he was like, well, what am I going to do with them? Exactly. <laughs> that's, away. that's a speculation that I wonder, mm-hmm. it, you know. Mm-hmm. Very yeah. Very well. We need some more DNA been. tests. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, um, yeah, I think they were saying that they're like, I don't, I don't remember. I think, uh, I think everybody in the Hicks family is dead now. Like, yeah, because I was looking up to see Sally's relation, and she was a granddaughter, but she's adopted, so she doesn't have his DNA, and everybody mm-hmm. else is dead. There mm-hmm. might be an, a, a hick still alive, but even still, that's not directly his DNA, so it wouldn't be a huge hit. But I don't know. At least, this, oh. well, yeah, it's crazy. So that means, you know, there's other babies out there that could have a, that same situation where definitely, <laughs> yeah. Dr. Hicks's kid. I wonder if his son's wife knew that could have been her father-in-law's child that he was offering f- up for adoption. Mm-hmm. And that's why she refused to adopt that baby initially. Because yeah. she eventually does adopt. They eventually do adopt a baby. They adopt Sally. I mean, it said that it was known right around town that he would sleep with people. Yeah. So she probably knew that, too. And she's probably like, right. I don't want your child. Right. But I'm wondering if, well, yeah, because that was his housekeeper. So it was pretty, probably, yeah. Yeah, probably she probably saw her pregnant evident. and then not pregnant and was like, hey, you want a baby? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> She's like, uh, nope. <laughs> exactly. Not that one. I, I don't blame her in a sense, but I also kind of do what a little bit. Baby? Blame who? Well, I mean, she got adopted because okay. we know, they know that she's this possible yeah. baby that she fault. denies for she denies to talk to anybody so that's also the other edge of the sword it's like if you're denying to talk to anybody but you believe that you're his actual kid why are you being quiet about this maybe are she you doesn't embarrassed want, she, yeah probably embarrassed or like doesn't want to be associated with him i don't know i don't know i just wonder how many of these like 200 confirmed babies could actually be his yeah and how many Get out around. there that we don't know about that could mm. be his? Or, like, how many of those abortions he performed that were actually his abortion, like his oh own gosh, babies? Yeah. Boy. <sighs> this is just crazy. Selling babies for $1,000 and, you know, anywhere from 30000 to $45,000 in our time, in our currency day and age. Yeah. <laughs> currency value. Man. It's insane. I hope they all went to good homes. How much is it to adopt a kid? I don't know. I think it's like a lot, though. No, why 65 is coming to my head. <laughs> I don't like know. 65K? Yeah. Hmm. So, like, zero to 50. We'll just say. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on how you get it. <laughs> zero to 50. <laughs> is it a backdoor baby? Yeah, it's a backdoor baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, how did he get away with it? Dr. Corruption. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Corruption. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Dr. Hicks helped some pretty prominent people get rid of a baby that was a mistake. Ooh, that's sad. <laughs> One of the Hicks babies, for example, discovers they are actually the biological daughter of the individual who was the mayor of the town at the time. Whoa. 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 The daughter. Biological That's daughter? Big. So the mayor must have had an affair. They must have been old, huh? What do you mean they must have been old? Not all mayors are old. <laughs> no, I mean, like, <laughs> they're still alive? Are they still alive? Well, I don't know because this is like the 50s and 60s. So if they're okay. at least 30 or so, and that means that they'd be. 90s or 100 something like that they'd be really old by now i, I doubt daughter. that the daughter might be alive yeah yes i mean yeah okay yeah because it one of the hicks babies discovers yeah so she's alive okay i'm like who's alive who's or, dead or he oh wait she? no it does say she's daughter sorry <laughs> ignore that <laughs> she are he okay <laughs> <laughs> we do not assume her gender i was also thinking about the mayor too because we i was assuming it was a male that's true i was too so that's why i said or he because i was true. thinking that's true it probably was a male it, it, yeah time yeah <laughs> definitely 
<laughs> Rabbit hole. <laughs> anyway. Squirrel. <laughs> yeah, <a> squirrel. <laughs> Others learned they're related to someone who was pretty high up in the police department at the time as well. I mean, I feel like they all had to be high up to have that much money to adopt a child. They're not adopting. These are the ones given, that are boarding. Oh, yeah, the opposite. They are. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So they're only paying a hundred bucks. <laughs> it's only a hundred dollars. Oh <laughs> For our freedom, it's a hundred dollars. <laughs> so, like, what? That'd be like three hundred bucks in, in our time. I do not know I the conversion. Know. I, I don't know either. <laughs> well, a thousand to thirty thousand seems like it's like times thirty. So it'd be like three thousand dollars. Don't hey, that's gotta be right. Let me get my calculator. Oh my God. <laughs> Anywhere from three hundred is there uh Yeah, see? Okay, okay. Anywhere from three thousand to uh um forty five hundred. But what are we talking about? Oh, a hundred dollars. Okay. To abort the baby yeah, or put the baby up for adoption, they had to pay $100 to him. And the conversion Which rate. would be about 3000 okay. to 4500 are in today's time. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, these are the mayor, high up police department, people, sheriff, they had anything money, like yeah. that. Yeah, they got money and they have a, a, um, an appearance to maintain. A, a, what's it called? Uh, Appearance. An appearance to maintain <laughs> <laughs> a reputation. Uh, um, oh, there's a word for Bad it. Reputation. Bad reputation. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they had—a bad reputation. Mm -hmm. hmm. Anyway, it's something. It's called something. They had a reputation. Right? Yeah, but <laughs> there's something I'm thinking about. Anyways, <laughs> if you think of it, just shout it. Out. I will. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. An image to uphold. That's my reputation. <laughs> yeah, but that's what I was looking for. <laughs> An image to maintain. <laughs> okay, okay. That's what I was looking for. Anyways. <laughs> anyway. So, unfortunately, it looks like a lot of the people in the town likely turned a blind eye to what Dr. Hicks was doing because they benefited from his services. Sad. So they just gonna keep having affairs and keep getting people pregnant, keep getting women pregnant, spreading his seed. So these women can suffer an abortion or being told that their baby was a stillborn. It could have been that too. I wonder if he like ever did it on purpose, like or and someone like agreed with him, like a housekeeper or something. Or like, what if he paid them? Like, let what me, do you mean? Like, let me get you pregnant and then you give me the baby. So I can sell it. Well, he probably didn't tell him that, but yeah. Like he impregnated them on purpose so that he could turn around. Yeah, and sell like what baby? if he like paid them or something under the table? Because we don't have any like housekeepers' testimonies, stories. Oh, we don't really know. He was a rich dude. Well, he's already paying them for being the housekeeper. Yeah, but he was a rich dude. He, apparently, he was good looking. It it could be just the like blackmail, like threatening them that you know don't say a word. Yeah, or, X, or you're going to be like a, a whore around town or something like that. Yeah, like so give me the baby. your reputation. Yeah. Bad, Bad reputation. reputation. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. Like, I wonder if any of them were in, in, in on it. Because, like, I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah. Because, I mean, could they afford a baby? Probably not. So, he's like, hey, oh, I should, what if she went to him and be like, I'm pregnant. And then he's like, well, like, just have it, give it to me, and then I'll deal with it. Or I wonder if he could, like, convince them that they had to let the baby get to a certain size before he could do an abortion and then actually deliver the baby. True, yeah, he could have done it that you way, You know, too. like, trick them like that because maybe women didn't know. That's true. Cause that how, like, the abortion, like, timeline yeah. or whatever. Yeah, he probably did do it like that, so he didn't have to pay him. Yeah. He's like, I'll just abort it or I'm going to call you a whore and for everybody. Right. Or something, whatever they did back in the day. <laughs> There's no telling. I don't know. Just saying stuff at this point. So Jane and the docu series track down who they believe is the very first Hicks baby. They discovered that all this started out with a lie. Doctor Hicks told the first Hicks baby's mother that the baby died, that he was stillborn. What makes the story even more tragic is the first baby was actually a set of twins. The series does end without them ever successfully finding his twin, but he does learn who his biological mother is, and he meets his sister. So, I mean, at least he got that. Mm -hmm. 
I wonder if his twin's still alive. I wonder if the twin was actually a stillborn and... Oh, yeah, I guess you can never know. And so, like, he was like, oh, she thinks there's only one baby in here. So I'm not lying to her if I tell mm-hmm. her that her baby's a stillborn. Yeah, here. But I can sell this other one. Yeah. I wonder if that's what happened. True, true, true. Hmm. So many questions. <laughs> so many questions. <laughs> Dr. Hicks had a few different approaches for obtaining babies that he could turn around and sell on the black market. Abortions were illegal at the time, and it was known that he would perform them anyway. Oftentimes, he encouraged mothers to have the babies and let him help adopt them out. When women actually came to him to have babies, he would often say the baby was stillborn. Then he would turn around and sell it out the back door of his clinic. Literally out the back door. (laughs) Parents reveal he was giving babies that weighed between 3 and 5 pounds at the back door. (laughs) Without a birth certificate in hand, parents were terrified to take this tiny baby to the hospital. So, they took them home and hoped for the best. Yeah, I'd kind of be scared to go to the hospital with a baby that small, too. But at the same time, take the freaking baby to the hospital and then maybe we wouldn't have 200 babies. Without yeah. their biological parents. I feel like they knew something sketchy was going on. But yeah. they didn't. They were like, oh, we're doing good for this baby. You know? Yeah, like they were like, they we're going to rescue this baby. Trying to justify it, yeah. But like, I wonder how many babies that he did this to that died on the way home. Yeah, three to five pounds. Yeah. Oh, Literally blood caked on the baby still. Yeah, they didn't care to clean it. Like, like, I just don't understand how the babies that small didn't need NICU. Mm-hmm. Like, respiration, their full, like, surely their lungs and stuff was not fully developed. I know. I just don't understand. That's it's weird. They'd take them home and hope for the best. <laughs> it was also learned that he noted some babies were so small he didn't know if they would make it. However, he always offered the parents a replacement baby if the baby didn't survive. A replacement baby? A replacement baby. Like, buy one, get one free or something. (laughs) (laughs) If your baby is damaged, come back and we'll replace it for free. Buy one, dies, get one free. (laughs) Buy one, dies. Buy one, buy one. Bogo. It's 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 like, like, sell for Bogo. (laughs) It's like. They're so bad. (laughs) That's just, uh, it's like that, that, uh, 24 hour warranty, yeah. you know, if it doesn't work in the next 24 hours, yes. bring it back and we they can replace it. <laughs> we need to put that baby in the freezer. No <laughs> <laughs> I got that. <laughs> but he would have his babies to give the mothers. If he, if he like, okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> My question, there's so many questions, so many questions to this, but the the few major ones that I have here is number one, how long is he giving these parents to see if the baby survives? How long is the warranty? Yeah. How long is this warranty? (laughs) Is it 24 hours if the baby doesn't survive the trip home? Or is it like if your baby doesn't make it in the next week? Like what's, what's the time? What's the turnaround time on that? Because he had that one for a week, but we didn't find out if any of the other ones were there for a week yeah but that could have been i know that um i read somewhere where he would do that he would hold babies that he didn't think would survive Mm -hmm. to see if they survived and that could have been what was going on with that baby like maybe that Mm -hmm. baby just so he had NICU type of equipment there to help that baby if your baby doesn't survive and and he's tells you you know he'll replace it is it an immediate replacement or yeah. does, like i guess what i'm trying when to get at available. is how many freaking women actually went in here yeah because it's way more than 200 he's it touched had to more, be. way more than 200 had to be mm-hmm. that's just the ones that they have birth certificates documented yeah mm-hmm. Yeah, so he yeah he definitely touched more than and and it's like how, like how many women a day did he see to have that many babies to have oh like I've got two on right. hand like did he call three people who wanted to adopt babies whenever he actually had six babies available and those three extra babies are the ones he's keeping for a week 
yeah. until the next, you know, whatever, till till the next few babies get born. Yeah. I do want to know what the warranty is, though. <laughs> I do want to know what the warranty <laughs> is, though. I like, don't hey, know hey Dr. Is. Hicks, I heard that you were giving babies out the back door for a thousand bucks. What's the warranty on those? <laughs> What's the replacement warranty? <laughs> like, if my baby doesn't survive the ride home, do I get a replacement for free? Do or I do have I to get pay? my money back? Yeah, do I get my money back? What's the warranty yeah. deal here? What's the warranty, sir? <laughs> You wouldn't know what the warranty is. That's so I funny. I don't want to know. Because, <laughs> like, how old I got to be, you know, just to not be replaced, you know? Yeah. That's so bad. It's so bad. What if it's, like, you've had this baby for, like, a week and, and the baby's just not doing well? Maybe it's not mm-hmm. dead or anything, but it might be doing well. And, like, can you take it back? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Dr. Like, Hicks, I don't want this baby anymore. You can keep you, my money. Do you just take, take returns? <laughs> do you accept returns? <laughs> This is not a laughing matter, but it's kind of funny. It's, you gotta make light of some situations. Yeah, you, know? you do. You do. I mean, it's sad, but you know. Mm-hmm. Going to hell. Yep. Yep. Right alongside Dr. Yep, yep. Hicks. <laughs> well, maybe not beside him. But, yeah, maybe not. Know. We ain't that bad, okay? We ain't that bad. We have national babies. <laughs> Once a baby was available, Hicks wasted neither time or words with his prospective buyers. You have 24 hours to come or I will call the next person on the list. He threatened. <laughs> he threatened. <laughs> Holy crap, man. He's reported to have said that to more than one client. 24 hours. Yeah, 24 I will hours. find you. <laughs> I will kill you. <laughs> I will sell your baby. Hicks warned his baby buyers not to be picky. If you told Hicks you only wanted a boy or you wanted a girl... You could forget about getting baby. Getting oh, baby. Are you getting picky now? No. <laughs> no refunds. I feel like I said that weird. <laughs> Re- yeah. Refunds. That's a refunds. Refunds. <laughs> no refunds. <laughs> no refunds. <laughs> so funny. Oh, okay. <laughs> It may never be known how many illegal adoptions were conducted by Dr. Hicks, who was stripped of his medical license in 1964, but never jailed. He was, after all, a member of the Copper Hill Kiwanis and the, and the Adams Bible class of the First Baptist Church, to which he donated a Wurlitzer. 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 It's German. What are you saying? Wurlitzer. What well, she said, organ. <laughs> <laughs> Also, his wife was a Sunday, what was she? A Sunday Bible school? <laughs> what? Sunday Bible school. A Sunday Bible school teacher. A s- Sunday school teacher. <laughs> a Sunday school teacher. Bible, right? For church. You don't have to say Bible because if you say a Sunday school teacher, people will know. Yes. Okay. I can't remember. What other schools on Sunday? <laughs> True. <laughs> like what? She was a Sunday school teacher. (laughs) Who taught the Bible. (laughs) For those who don't know what other schools might be on Sunday and what they teach. They taught the Bible (laughs) to children. Man. (laughs) He was known to give free medicine to the very poorest in town. He made house calls to those who couldn't otherwise get to his clinic. So I could see why people were like, this man's such a good man. He'd give free medicine to people who can't afford it and, you know, house clock made house calls to people who cannot get there. So, I mean, he did really good things for the community. He just did really bad things to these women. I think he like, um, was maybe trying to keep up with like a good appearance. So yeah, people wouldn't think down of him or whatever. That's true. Like, he wouldn't do this. No, Dr. Hicks? Not Dr. Hicks. There's no way he did that. Mm -mm. It was those skanky women. (laughs) (laughs) You've got him mistaken. Mm -hmm. Maybe the women are getting abortions, but they're not doing it at his clinic. Mm -hmm. No. Never. That's how that went down. (laughs) That is exactly how that went down. (laughs) We were there. We would know. We were there. (laughs) It wasn't the illegal adoptions that got Dr. Hicks in hot water. It was the illegal abortions. He was stripped of his medical license in 1964, but served no jail time. The charges against him were dropped, and he continued practicing medicine for a while before his death in 1972 at 83 years old. 
I cannot believe that it was the abortions that got him in trouble and not the adoptions. Like, how did they not know that, like, beforehand? Like, he posted it in phone booths and bus stops and stuff. I think maybe it might have been... See, uh... Well, number one, there was police officers, you know. Oh, yeah, they are all... What'd you say? What was the word? Corrupted. Corrupt. <laughs> <laughs> Corruption. <laughs> yeah. But they were they were high profile. True, 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 true. And stuff like that. So, they, so they that's the first sign right there is that, Corruption. you know. But I also think that maybe these posters were kind of in code. I don't think it was directly like, oh. hey, free, you <laughs> adoption <know>. here. <laughs> adoption. <laughs> right, thousand dollar babies abortion. here. And abortions here. Both of them. Well, yeah, because he probably wouldn't advertise the adoption yeah. here as much. But um, I just still can't believe that the abortions is what got him. Because, I mean, yeah, I get it. It's that time of, you know, during that time. But like the, the, the adoptions, like, to tell a woman that her baby was dead, I know, and to sell the baby—that's black if market. She wanted it, yeah, if she yeah. didn't want to get rid of her baby, like he's doing a, uh, abortions for a hundred bucks. He's he's making thousands of dollars on these adoptions. It doesn't make any sense. What I tell you about children? We don't mess up children. We don't and these, mess them up. We don't mess them up. These are now people that are. Like, fill in probably, like, empty and lost and, like, did my parents ever love me and stuff, you know? Like, they don't, if they're, most of their parents are probably dead, they don't know the truth, you know? Yeah, actually, there was a story that we didn't talk um, get into of this lady. Her name was Cindy. Um, she was one of the Hicks babies, and she was on the quest to find her mom. And oh, my bad. Before the docu series came out, and she actually did. She located her mom and got in contact with her. And apparently, like they met up once. And from what I remember and, and recall from the series, when they interviewed her, they had a good time. Their first interaction, but when she reached out to make further plans and you know trying to meet up with her mom again and actually try to build a relationship with her biological mom she ghosted her basically and did not talk to her and then i think they had a confrontation might have gotten into a fight or something um so they hadn't spoken for like three to five years something like that mm -hmm. so when this docuseries came back out or came out and they were you know doing all the research for this so they met up with miss cindy and they contacted her mom and they scheduled this whole meeting and they filmed it and everything. But um, they, uh, so basically the mom was kind of embarrassed, but also just, I don't know, it was weird because she admitted that she did not want the baby. Mm -hmm. Like she was young and yeah, I don't remember if she said she was in love with the man or not in love with the man, but I think she said they were like 15 and 16, mm -hmm. didn't want the baby. And so it was like, you know, as far as she knew, she had an abortion um, or she or she gave the baby up for adoption. So she wanted nothing to do with the baby. So for her daughter to come to her after she's like, you know, yeah, like, I, what the? I don't want the baby. It, it, I think it just yeah, and know, after went going wrong all those years. Like how old was Cindy like? Oh, she was like in her 50s. Yeah. So, so mom had to be late 50s, 50s early 70s. It's crazy. Because she was young. Yeah. 50 years later and this kid's or this person's like, I was your baby. Or, mm -hmm. what the fuck? Yeah. But they ended up like, I mean, but she remarried or she married and she had another kid and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. um, it's just like they ended up being okay after that i don't know if it followed up with hard. them or not but like they hugged and like they you know they apologized but she was like i didn't want you to be honest i was going to get an abortion i didn't want a kid mm -hmm. I was too young and in love and dumb and stuff like that yeah but anyways we didn't get into that uh story too deep i'm, I'm like so glad about the, the freaking dna testing because all these people are like getting got they probably never thought they were going to get got <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're like They'll never find out. You know, the people who did it on purpose and stuff. Are you talking about the parents? The moms? Yeah, the parents. That gave the, the baby? Moms. If they did it, like, on purpose, they're like, they'll never know. No one will ever know. There you go. Like, no one will ever know and stuff like that. No one will ever know. <laughs> if she was, like, giving her baby up for adoption. Or not adoption, but, like, just giving her baby away. Oh, like, the parent, Like, well, no one will ever know if that was their intentions. Like, the moms? Mm or that no now, one will ever knows she had a kid. Oh, but now they're getting got. 
Yeah, by DNA testing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I just say the DNA testing is getting them. Mm -hmm. Whether they wanted to or not. Like, they probably didn't ever think it was going to be possible that it would trace yeah. back to them. I think that's the way that Cindy's mom felt. Yeah. I want to say her mom's name was Cindy, too. And they didn't know that, like, that wasn't, oh. like, that was just kind of. clink a dink Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I could be wrong on that, but I feel like it was something weird like that. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm not, not talking bad about the people. I'm just saying. They just probably never yeah. knew mm -hmm. that it was going to come back on them. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, we haven't heard any, like, bad stories that the adoptive mm -hmm. parents, about the adoptive parents or anything. Like, they've all seemed like they've had good stories so far. Yeah, so far. I think it's like eight, right? Eight of them out of 200. Yeah. 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 Probably so some in there that have yeah. been bad, though. That's a high so number far. for it to not. Yeah. But that one that. He, so, whatever happened to his mom, I don't know. And I don't remember if he found out or not. But his dad, he found his dad. And um, it turns out the dad actually had another son. And that son was a junior. So, he, he thought the son was his dad because it didn't say, like, junior mm. or senior, but he knew that was the name that he was looking for. So, he goes to his half-brother, essentially. This is going to be his half-brother. He goes to the, where he works, and, and at first, he's like, they're like, y'all better get off our property, blah, 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 like, real, like, get off, turn, turn the cameras off, turn the cameras off. But they explain the situation, and so the half-brother was kind of like, oh, wait, what? Like, I didn't know I had a half brother. Let me call my dad. So he gets in touch with his dad, and his dad like just hung up on him and was just not having it. Why did I not, I not remember this? <laughs> you don't remember that? Mm -mm. But yeah. So he it might have been a female, not actually a brother. Yeah, I actually, remember a girl. I remember a girl. I'm thinking. Wait. I'm like. Wait. I might be getting mixed up. Oh, fuck. So sorry, <laughs> the editing Val. I'm so sorry because that's gonna be a mess to try yeah, to yeah, dig yeah. through. <laughs> But it was a female looking for her. She found her dad and her half-brother. She got the dad's number. They were supposed to meet. And then he just, like, told the half-brother, nope, not doing it. Mm -mm. Yeah. So that's kind of a sad story on the biological side. Yeah. I can see it being sad on the biological side. Yeah. Especially if they did it on purpose. Yeah. Or even if their parents have passed now. And so they'll mm -hmm. never know if they were yeah, put exactly. up for adoption or if they thought that they were stillborn mm -hmm. or aborted. If aborted. Yeah. Well, at that time, the thousand dollars matters a lot since it was a large amount to pay and the sale of around 200 babies ended up pocketing more than $2 million. He was rich. Rich. I wonder what that would convert to 200 million. Probably. Don't ask me. Probably. <laughs> or something. I don't know. A lot. <laughs> Girl, get your calculator out. <laughs> it is times 30, so it'd be 60 million. Dang. Yeah, that's a lot. They had some money. <laughs> so Dr. Hicks has a large mausoleum, which bears his name at Crest Lawn Cemetery, standing tall above many of the other cemetery plots marked with headstones. However, his mausoleum does not hold his body. Hicks is buried beside the mausoleum in a grave marked with a headstone. They actually, um, when they started doing this docu-series, they actually exhumed the mausoleum. I don't know if that's what you would call it, but they Just opened open. it up. Yeah. yeah like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think they took it out. <laughs> um, uh, I, I think they did it twice, actually. Yeah. I think it was twice. Um, Jane, you know, this, so this whole story came to light in 1997. That's when the Jane, um, the Hicks baby, one of the Hicks babies, uh, she brought this whole story to the light, to the media, to the press. And so with the help of the police department back then and stuff, they actually opened it up, the mausoleum, to see if maybe he had taken it to the grave, if you will. Taken all, yeah. like, because there was apparently, like, a lot of files missing and they couldn't find a lot of stuff, um, you know, a lot of research or whatever, or a lot of his files so they were like well maybe it's in the mausoleum because he's not buried in there so what's in there why does he have this mausoleum if he's not in there so they open it up and apparently they didn't find anything in there yeah. or if they did find something it was covered up i kind of feel like um 
since he did get his license taken away for the abortions, he probably got rid of all that stuff so he wouldn't get, get taken down for anything else. Do they take that kind of stuff when you get your license taken from you? Well, I mean, he probably got rid of all the documents, like, just in right, case. Right, right. But I wonder, do they do that? Do they do what? Take, take like, all the files and, like, all of the... Um... Well, he's probably just getting rid of it evidence, like, just because... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I'm just curious, though. What, what do you mean? Like, whenever your 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 license is suspended for something... Oh, some, do they take, like, like, the documents? Yeah, do, do they take all of the medical files because you're not a doctor anymore. You shouldn't have medical files anymore. I wonder if, like, the question. board or whatever, the, the authority that has the authority to do that. But... I wonder if they take all that yeah, stuff. There was corruption. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's very true. And that's why I think that maybe whenever they first opened the mausoleum... Back in 19-whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, I wonder if there was something in there and because like, of the they corruption. they the documents in there, though? I feel like it's a burn them. Throw them in some water. Like, what if someone from the police could have, like, warned them ahead of time? Like, hey, they're going to come. I was thinking that, get too. You. Yeah, so get rid of the evidence. No telling. They didn't find any babies in the freezer? <laughs> <laughs> They didn't find any babies. They didn't find any babies in the freezer? <laughs> oh, that's funny. No, because he would have to have babies somewhere. Stillborn? What do you do with you. them? Oh, the stillborn? Yeah. I'm sure that he, like, cremated those or buried them or threw them in the dumpster out back. I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I, I, there's no telling. Or he could have kept them in the freezer so that he could say, oh, your baby's yeah. still born and give him that baby. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I mean, there's... Po- <laughs> I don't know. He was crazy. Yeah, he was... Yeah. He's money hungry. Yeah, he was greedy. Greedy. Yep. Uh, and corrupt. Corruption. The Malpractice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is the story yeah. of Dr. Hicks and the thousand dollar babies. Mm-hmm. Isn't it wild? Like, it is a wild story. What side are you on? <laughs> it's kind of... Mm. Well, tell them the sides, because... <laughs> I Like, it's kind of both, because, like... Did he do good stuff? Like, what? Well, By giving the babies up for adoption? Like, giving yeah. them to homes? Give them... I guess for see. the ones that were going in there for an abortion? Tell them, tell them, <laughs> tell them, tell them these sides. women to, like, carry the baby to term, and we'll adopt them out... You know, that's giving these babies another life. Mm-hmm. So, are you on that side like he's doing good? As long as, like, the mom wanted to give the baby away and they gave it to a wanting parent that, like, couldn't have a baby or whatever, I can see how that's kind of good, even though they're going around near the back way. I still don't think it's good because he's convincing these women yeah. that that's what they want. True, true, true. And these babies were three to five pounds yeah like i wonder if they have health problems or mental yeah, problems could, because yeah. they were born so small yeah like probably after he got greedy is when it all went like yeah maybe in, yeah maybe initially like the thought might have been good like yeah. oh you know we're not going to do abortions number one because it's illegal no he wanted to well i mean yeah he he wanted to but at the same time maybe, it's like, like but like that first one, maybe someone came to him and was like, look, I can't take care of this His baby. <laughs> yeah. I can't take care of this baby. Like, or what if they like left it? You know, when you can like leave babies places, what if they like left it on the front door, back door? <laughs> leave babies. <laughs> <laughs> you can. <laughs> Let's be clear, people out there. You can leave a baby at like a hospital or a fire police department station. or a police station. Okay. Please do not leave babies in a dumpster. <laughs> like oh. that one story. You yes. can't just leave baby no. anywhere. <laughs> Don't just leave your baby anywhere, okay? Uh-uh. Somewhere or someone will get it and take care of it. Mm-hmm. But like, what well, something like that happen? And he was like, oh, I can just like sell it or something. Like, what am I going to do with a baby? So, I doubt that's what happened. But that's how he started off good, you know? I what if that's so. how he started off good? He was like, oh, I can sell it. <laughs> he's like, oh. And he got greedy. Yeah. And he's like, I don't care. A five pound baby. Take it. <laughs> take it. You got 24 hours. No warranty. <laughs> 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 valid this warranty no warranties over eight pounds <laughs> over eight under eight pounds over, over. Or under if they're over eight pounds no warranty. oh yeah as soon as they gain three pounds yeah. from, from the time 
So is there a healthy weight? No warranty. Mm -mm. Don't come back. That's what he said. <laughs> That's what he said. That's what he said. He told me. <laughs> he told you before he died in 1972. Yeah. He told you. <laughs> he told me. No, I'm on the other side of this. It was all fucked up. All kinds of wrong. Mm -hmm. I don't think there was ever any good intentions. I mean, maybe, maybe not but at the same time, no. Like, for the adoptive parents, maybe? They still went around, around... They still went about it the wrong way? They still The went, adoptive parents did? Yeah. They were doing it... They knew they were doing bad stuff. Well, but, Yeah, they wouldn't bring uh, the baby to the hospital. Because it was, like, two pounds. Well, yeah. No, they wouldn't do that because they didn't have a birth certificate. Yeah, they, so they knew they were doing wrong stuff i would assume well you don't get the birth certificate right away when you have a baby anyways i don't know i've never had a baby yeah no you don't get the birth certificate right away so then why would they not go to the hospital because with a baby that small and the mom clearly did not look like <laughs> she just had a baby they're not gonna get that baby babies. back they just paid a thousand dollars for that baby they're not getting that baby okay, back so if they so take it to a hospital they did have good intentions then. yeah i think the parents are yeah. not in the wrong yeah i don't think the parents fully knew like some of the parents in the interview did say that like they had a feeling that this was kind of sketch yeah, whenever they got there mm -hmm. but the, by yeah, that point like, you're too far in you're too far deep like you yeah you're you like them. you're saving a life at this point yeah got a back door with blood on it yeah but my problem is like if that were me and I in this and and I don't know I I would have gone to the hospital called the authorities told them to come to the hospital and explain what just happened I think that either they would try to contact the actual birth mother figure out who the birth mother was and see you know hey did you were you told that you, or did you just have a baby and she's like no I had an abortion oh, well, her baby's still alive did they do that back then what like all this like well, I mean, they could. I don't think they'd get that far. <laughs> <laughs> I think that at some point, maybe they would allow the parents who brought the baby to the hospital, maybe allow them to continue to get adoption for the baby. You know, be like, because I don't know if I took a three or the five pound baby to the hospital and explained, um, thought I was doing right by going through this adoption process that i thought was legal um but this nothing about this seems legal but this is the baby you know what if what if they tried but all the corruption oh yeah that's right we yeah, I keep forgetting about the corruption yeah and the, it was women so but they didn't know that so still and it was also women though yeah trying yeah. to snitch yeah you got to think about the on time. a doctor that was well you're done. right well wealthy <laughs> and no um, not wealthy. he was wealthy well he was wealthy but like <laughs> well what's the word we used earlier um no not of high important <laughs> um, he was well known not known what the fuck is the word he was very high in the community what was the word we used earlier you, you used a whole sentence <laughs> It wasn't a whole sentence. It was a whole sentence, just like in categories. <laughs> we don't talk about categories. We don't talk about categories. <laughs> we don't talk about Bruno or categories. We don't talk about Bruno or. <laughs> what? Well, he was well. What's the word when you're like popular? <laughs> he was well known. I mean, no, because that's what I was saying. No. Is well. Did you read that or did I read that? I don't. I have no idea. Me? You? Oh, you might have read it. He was well. He was pretty high. That's what he was like high, highly thought of. Well. He was well liked. Yeah, I guess well liked. He was, um, yeah, I don't know. highly liked. So yeah, sure. But anyways, yeah, so um, yeah. I, I'm never going to be on the side of any of this part of the story being good, other than maybe there was some good intentions there, but nah. Yeah, maybe at first, but I think, yeah, he got greedy. Nah. It got bad. I don't blame the adopted parent, the adoptive yeah. parents, and I don't blame the moms who went in there for an abortion yeah, or, or to give their baby up for yeah. adoption because they were convinced to do that. 
or if that's what they wanted to do. And I mm-hmm. damn sure don't blame the parents or the mothers who went in there to have a baby and was told that their baby died. Oh, yeah, that's that that one's the worst. That is the worst. That's terrible. Mm-hmm. But yeah. So what did you think of the story? Have you heard of it? Mm-hmm. Did you watch it? Um, the series is on Hulu. It's only a three part series. Yeah, we uh, summed it up. <laughs> yeah, that's super, yeah. <laughs> however long this video is, we summed it up yeah, for you. We summed it up. But it was a good watch. It was re- it was really interesting, and I I'm, I can't wait to see if they find out more about um, yeah. the whole thing. So I I want to know more. I got questions. <laughs> yeah, so many questions. I got questions that we're probably never going to get the answer to because the story is so old. Everybody that's involved is pretty much gone. Yeah, that's crazy. It is crazy. Oh, and shout out to my mom for submitting this story um, as a topic. Come on. Uh, yeah, I, I told her, she sent me this topic and I was like, <laughs> it's already on the list. Like, Aww. it's something I was interested in too. It was something I wanted to cover also. So it was really cool to have another story that, you know, our listeners are interested in. Our and number one fans. Our yes, moms. Our moms. <laughs> shout out, moms. So shout out. <laughs> but yeah, thank you, mama. And do we have a question for today? Yes, we do. So our question of the day, does a person's name influence the person they become? I'd like to think so. You think so? Yeah. I don't know. Because like when I was growing up and I found out my name means princess. Nah. Uh, you yeah, know, I can see that. It totally influenced me to become a princess. My ice princess? <laughs> to be a dra- Yes, your ice princess. princess. Um, to be drama queen, to be extra, like a princess. So, are you talking about, like, the meaning of the name? Are we talking about the meaning of the name? Or, like, just the name? I guess name? both. I think it could be both. Okay. However way you would take that question. Because, I mean, yeah, because if I'm thinking about, like, the not the meaning because that's what my name means Mm -hmm. but if i'm thinking about the name sarah alone if if i didn't know the meaning i guess like like because i was thinking about like basic britney's like basic bitches (laughs) britney's are all britney's basic bitches (laughs) yeah there's a lot of bees (laughs) Mm -hmm. Uh, i don't know i I was say no maybe if it's the meaning maybe yeah i could see that but, like, if your name was, like, Steve or something. You don't think you'd fall in that Steve, Steve category? Like, you would fall in that Aries category? But what's a Steve? A Steve? <laughs> Steve is... Let me think. Let me think of what a Steve is. Steve is, is going to be, like... a crocodile hunter? <laughs> <laughs> I was literally about to say he's going to be, like, either the jock or the guy who has the jock abilities but is not in any kind of Steve sport. is a doctor. Steve could also be a doctor. <laughs> Steve or Steven? Steven, but Steve for short. Okay. <laughs> That's not the best word, for, I mean, name for me to think about. I know. <laughs> That's the first one that came to my head. But we're going to talk about Britney's. And Bruno's. <laughs> Bruno's. <laughs> Britney's to me and every Britney I've pretty much encountered has been a B word. Really? Yeah. If I can act like one, like to people. Yeah. Like if you're a friend, like they're cool, but they can definitely be a B. Yeah, a Britney. They could be a Britney. No, I don't think I've ever had a Britney friend, a friend really? named Britney. I mm-hmm. had a bunch, but like I know they were like they could be cruel to other people. I had a bunch of fake friends named Britney. Uh oh. Yeah. Britney's a fake. <laughs> yes, 100%. Now, I'm not talking about middle names, Britney, because we have a friend whose middle name is Britney. Who? Shauna. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We're strictly talking about first names here. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, I think a person's name, their actual name, may not influence them as much as their the meaning of their name. Yeah, 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 I can see that. That's my opinion on the, on the matter. I think mine means strong or something like that. Really? Mm-hmm. That suits you. My last name means fields. Strong fields. <gasps> Corn? No. <laughs> <laughs> Corn fields? Corn? <laughs> what does Anne mean? Now people know my own name. Basic. <laughs> Basic. 
strong basic fields. <laughs> <laughs> so probably not corn, but maybe corn. <laughs> could mean corn. Yeah, it could mean corn. Could be also hay. Hay fields. Some strong hay or fields. Or grass. <laughs> I, I wonder what my middle name means. Look up yours. I yeah, I want to know what my name is. House. <laughs> so let's say it all together. Do you know your last name meaning? No, I'm about to look. Princess House. That I could see that being like me because I could see that being like me because you know I like to host and it's got to be perfect. And, and I feel like that's a princess thing. Mm-hmm. Like, you got to have it perfect. And, and I like my house, whenever I host, to be perfect. Like Hosting a ball. Yeah. I could see that. She's the belle of the ball. Yeah. What is your last name? Wood. Meadow. Wood. Princess Housewood. <laughs> Hold on. Mine means gracious or merciful. Oh, it's like clearing by a wood. So what oh. is your first name? What? Is what? Gracious. Strong. Valerie? She's yeah. strong. Anne is? Anne is gracious or merciful. Strong, merciful. Fields. <laughs> but it also means he, God, has favored me. Well, Sarah was named in a Bible. In the Bible. Of course it is basic. No. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> the name refers to grace. Let me make sure my first hmm. name means that. <laughs> pretty sure that's what it meant strong so mine would be princess house clearing by a meadow so you need to put a house by a clearing in a meadow oh wait i'm sorry you said meadow didn't you no no it says meadow right here yeah you said meadow clearing by a wood is what it says so ox clearing you are kind of in clearing by a lake <laughs> that's true so and mine's woods all around me yeah kind of Health and strength. What? What and is brave? My my first name. Oh, okay. Valiant. I was like fierce. That's that's another one. Is fierce, strong, brave, valiant, fierce. Mm. Oh, I can't. Even, I, can't I feel like it. you had to be growing up with your brothers. Why? Oh, for yeah. <laughs> oh I was like, what do you mean you had to be growing up? <laughs> what? <laughs> I understood it the wrong way. <laughs> you definitely did. I wonder what. I wonder what. I did. I was not, though. Like, they made me cry a lot. Thanks, brothers. Especially <laughs> Kevin. Kevin, remember when he used to, like, beat me up all the time and, like, squish my fingers in the door? It's outing you. <laughs> you probably don't listen to this anyway. <laughs> <laughs> At least my older brother was kind of nice. Aw. Kind of. I said kind of. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't let me play at Nintendo with them. Like, that messed up. Yeah, that is messed up, but I, I've been there, too, with my sisters. They would get mad at me because I would, like, chew on the corns. <laughs> <laughs> Were you a dog? I was just laying there watching them because they wouldn't let me play, and I would just, like, have it in my mouth, you know? Oh, my but God. Chewing on corns. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> like, no so wonder funny. they hated me, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. There was, like, a, some woods behind my house. I mean, not, like, woods, woods, but some a little... um. Your old house? Yeah. Okay. The one that burned down. Um, and so we'd go back there and play all the time. But my two middle sisters, April and Lacey, uh, they, when they were go, when they go back there, they would not let me and Lindsay back there to play. Man. At all. They would not let us. So me and Lindsay found our own part of the woods where they wouldn't, like, they couldn't get to them unless you come out of the woods. Like, because mm. I don't know how I explain it, but. Yeah, they kicked us out of that too sometimes. Man, all the siblings, kicked, man. We well, I'm pretty sure Lindsay. I hope Lindsay's listening to this. If she can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that we would also. I mean, always make it seem like ours was better than theirs, mm-hmm. but in reality, theirs was so much better than ours. <laughs> so they'd like kick us out, and we're like, hmm, we got the better one now. Yeah. So we take <laughs> off into the other one. It was so. Oh my oh god. Oh my god. So funny. That's great. Man, to be a sibling, mm-hmm. to be a younger sibling, okay? The the hell we went through. <laughs> yeah. But it's so funny, though, because we get, we got we got away with a lot more. Did you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, we yeah. definitely got away with a lot more. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is like, by then, the parents just like, I don't yeah. care. The younger ones always do. <laughs> yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Um, going back to the names and the meanings, uh, Maddox's name means fortunate. So fortunate. Oh, fortunate one. Her son. My son. Her oh son. yeah. That's my kiddo. Yeah. He's so um, this old fortunate one. Well, for, like fortunate. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> so what do y'all think? Do you think that what is our question? Do you think? <laughs> How do we word it? Does a person's name influence the person they become? So do you think that? Do you agree with us that like maybe not their actual name, but the meaning of their name? And who they become. I think I feel like I've become like a strong, fierce, bravish person. You have and you're getting mm-hmm. braver. Yeah. You are. It, it might have taken you almost. Oh, wait. It is 31 years. <laughs> it's taken 31 years, but I'm getting there. <laughs> I was like, I almost 31 because I'm not quite 31 yet, so I was going off my age. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you're definitely becoming a lot more brave. Mm-hmm. I think I am fierce. You're very strong. You're very, very strong. You're freaking Aries. Yes, you're fierce. I'm fire, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so I definitely live up to my name. Princess Home. <laughs> you're your princess. princess. Home Widow. So, what? Not Widow. Win- Meadow. <laughs> <laughs> so widow princess home clearing by a meadow oh the whole sentence okay clearing, clearing by, by a widow both of those oh, okay. it's it was like clearing by a, a, a meadow or a wood okay okay it's like a campfire that is so true because the house that i am it's like a dream mm-hmm. home and i told like my realtor that one too whenever we found it mm-hmm. it's in the clearing in a wood yep then you're by water mm-hmm it's a dream home, mm-hmm. and only princesses get their dream home. That's right. I just kind of also wish it wasn't here. <laughs> <laughs> like, if it was any other lake, I don't want it to be by this lake. But it's so nice. I mean, it's nice. Yeah, yeah. I'll give it that. But At least yeah. since your ears are, like, big, or it's like a pond. True. <laughs> yeah. Tell us what your name I'd means. Rather have, I'd rather have that pond than this lake. You think so? You can't yeah. put a boat in it. That's fine. So, um, let us know what your name means in the comments. Yes, what do you want to know? Curious. If you're listening to your whole solely, name. Yeah, if you're, yeah, your whole name. Yeah. And if you're listening solely to our podcast, go over to our YouTube channel and drop a comment down there to let us know what it is. Or you can go over to our Facebook page. Our podcast episodes do post directly to our Facebook page. So you can find this episode and comment on there or send us a message. So thank you for watching. And as always, stay, stay curious. curious. I like the solo ones are good. They're good. You got this girl. You can do it. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> Get out of my head. <laughs> it went away. I don't know what the last thing you just said was. I said, hey, little mama, let me whisper in here. Can you hear Oh, that? my God. Yes. <laughs>